Master Chef is back. I'm hugely excited about this as an opportunity. Two expert judges to decide who wins. We're looking for a great cook who can make it as a professional. Someone to turn out exceptional food under pressure. I would have had sleepless nights thinking about my menus if I didn't want to win. The prize to work in a top restaurant. This competition just gets tougher. Whoever wins, it's going to change their life. I like to win everything I do. Master Chef is going large. These six contestants all want to become the next star restaurant chef. But in this programme, only one winner will get through to Friday's quarter-final. They face three tough tests. They have to invent a dish from scratch. It doesn't work at all. They have to survive the pressure of working in a professional kitchen. Two ravioli, one poule noir. Hurry up, step. And they have to impress the judges with their own recipes. Your sauce is ice. All in just two days. Welcome to MasterChef. One great plate of food, 40 minutes to do it in. Off you go, best of luck. It's the quick elimination test. Deciding which three stay are judges, John Tarode, top chef and restaurateur. If you want to be master chef, you've got to have a natural ability. But most importantly, you've got to understand what really good food is actually all about. And food writer and ingredients expert, Greg Wallace. They need to prove straight away they can get hold of their nerves and cook under pressure. Show me you can do it. The contestants have 40 minutes to invent a dish and cook it from any of today's ingredients, which are phyllo pastry, salmon fillet, chestnut mushrooms, potato, dill, olives, almonds, bananas, fresh tomatoes and parma ham. David, you are a dentist. Yeah. you built up your own practice, I take yeah. it. Yeah. Why would you want to jack all that in for food? I love food. But do you love it enough that you could win? I mean, it's MasterChef, the competition's quite hard. I would hope so. I don't go into things I can't win. Dentist David believes he's got what it takes to go all the way. My strengths coming into the competition are competitiveness, being driven. I don't like to do second place. After a successful career in advertising, Beth has decided she now wants a career in food. My main objective is to be a freelance food writer so that I can work anywhere in the world. So I thought entering MasterChef would give me some credentials. Beth, you have the look on your face of a very, very confident woman. What have you decided to do? Salmon wrapped in the parma ham to give it a nice smokiness. And the salmon's going to get the smoky flavour from the ham? Yep. Has the ham been smoked? Parma... Mm. It's got a smoky flavour to it, but it's actually more salty. It's going to get the salt from it instead. 20 minutes left, guys. You're halfway. Investment analyst Russell wants to make a new life for himself. My dream is to start my own restaurant, gastro pub, and I wish that I'd decided to do something with food a lot earlier than I have. There is high stakes here, isn't there, really? I mean, you know, you could win this, you could change your life, you could change your whole career. Is that what you want to do? Absolutely. Uh, I've worked in the city now for 10 years. I work as a compliance analyst. Very boring. <laughs> Edwina, are you OK? I think so. I'm still trying to decide what I'm doing. I've got the first part ready. They're still trying to decide what to do. I'm mulling it over in my head. I've got a big idea. I'm going to make a sauce with the soft cheese. I'm just trying to decide what to put in it. Just so. Despite her indecision, consultant Edwina is hoping to make it through. It all comes down to the, the mystery ingredients. I could either excel at it or it could be disastrous. I have no idea what's going to happen. I think the main thing is, as long as I don't serve up raw chicken or burn something, I'll be quite happy with that. <laughs> Samia, tell us about your origin, where you're from. I'm French-Algerian. So what sort of food um, do you feel is your style? Both 
North African and French. And have you lived in both countries? I lived in, in Algeria until I came to university. Teacher Samia wants to cook food that showcases her French Algerian roots. I just love food. I love to read about it. I love to eat it. I love to experiment with it. This love, basically. We have 10 minutes left. Liverpudley and Gary wants to swap his life with computers for his great passion. Everyone on the deli is definitely something that I dream of doing. Um, it's something I'd want to do for, for a good while. I think there's a real shortage in the world of like delis and things like that. Do you find it hard to get the ingredients you want to cook with where you live? I do, yeah. Like sometimes you look at the recipes on the telly and they say get like gallon gal or something, but I can't get gallon gal from the spot up the road, so you've got to like shop around a little bit. Good luck, Gary. We've got two minutes, it's food to be going on the plates now. Your time's up. First up is dentist David. He's made salmon on potato rosti with parma ham and a butter sauce. The sauce is nice and sharp, which goes well with the salmon. The salmon's well seasoned. I like the texture of the ham on top. I'm going to dare it to say I think it's a really, really well cooked dish. Thank you. I like the taste of the salt of the bacon. I don't enjoy the crunch right. on top of the salmon. I have a lot to learn technically. I'm a home cook. Well, if that's home cooking, it's pretty good. Thank you. Thanks, David. Ex-advertising whiz Beth is hoping her salmon wrapped in parma ham with spinach, peppers and a citrus dressing will be her ticket to a new life. As nice as a salad is, it doesn't show a great deal of culinary skill, does it? How did you get the citrus in your dressing? I added um, a cider vinegar. You use cider? I know that's apple. Well-known citrus fruit, the apple? What I wanted was sharpness. All right. The olives and the ham work really nicely because they are salty. But there's a lot of things in there which I just... I just find a bit scruffy. It's not the most pleasant of experiences. Russell is hoping to get one step closer to his gastropub dream with a filo parcel of feta cheese, tomatoes and mushrooms with a red pepper sauce. Your sauce is ace. Tangy, nearly sweet, deep, and that is smoky. I think that the parcel is a bit of a disaster. Yeah. I think it's too thick. I don't think it's seasoned very well. I don't think the mushrooms cooked properly inside. Edwina's hoping she's made the right decision with salmon wrapped in parma ham and a warmed up salad. You heated up the salad. Yes, well, I thought it would be fine in pots. I don't understand why you would make up that lovely salad and then warm it up. Half cooked, not quite cold tomatoes are just you look very nervy, and I'm guessing that's because you're not that happy with your dish. No, I feel I could have done better. We've got salty olives, salty feta, mm. salty salmon, and salty ham. It's just a big, big collision in my mouth at the moment. I think you were probably right to be nervous. Thanks. French Algerian Samia is the only one to make a dessert. Banana parcels with butterscotch sauce and roasted almonds. Wow, that is sweet. Sweet honey from the, with the bananas. Mm -hmm. I love the texture of those blanched almonds around the outside. It's inventive, you've thought about it, but I don't know if I want to go back and have any more of it. It's got the sweetness from the banana and the sweetness from the butterscotch. You, you said you wanted alcohol, I quite understand, mm. because I think a, a splash of deep rum in there, yeah. and we're moving the two things together. But I have to applaud some of your ideas, and I've also got to applaud your bravery. Will Gary's simple salmon fish cakes and tomato sauce be enough to convince the judges? Crunchy, well-flavoured sauce for the tomatoes and the onions. A little bit of dill at the last moment. Um, good on you for doing fish cakes. It's not something that anybody else in the room has even thought about. If you are going to do two fish cakes, what? Do them the same size. Do them the same size. It's not the prettiest I've seen, but it, it, it shows somebody on the right route. Cheers. Thanks. Thanks, Gary. Right, you go and sit it out. We're going to talk about you. We'll get you in as soon as we can. Thank you very much. Six would-be pro cooks here wanted to get through to the next round for their chance in the pro kitchen. We have to find three from these six. Edwina was one of the people who started off quite well. Her salmon wrapped in the ham, and they made a really lovely salad to go with it. 
and then chucked it all in a pot and stirred it around. And heated it. What for? It's MasterChef, not Master Salad Maker. I don't hold out a lot of hope for that young lady. When I made the salads, cold, and in the last minute I panicked and put it in a pan to heat up, and they were right to point that out because I did panic and I should have just left it the way it was. Beth talking about citrus flavour through her dressing when she had no citrus. Don't she got citrus from cider vinegar? That's extraordinary. Imagine being able to get citrus flavours from cider vinegar. That's brilliant. We've got a winner just there. Oh, come on. Somebody talking like that is, is a little bit worrying. That was a total nightmare. As soon as I walked in, I saw the three ingredients that I least like, and having to do a dish of any description with those three was... Um, put me in a bit of a whirling spin. Reality is she can't cook. Well, I think you're probably right. David produced for us today by far the best seasoned, the most well-constructed, the most interesting, the most well-thought-out food we saw in the room. There's no denying the skill in David's food, and it was very good. I'd like to go through because I've got this far and I'm here to win. Sammy has got to be the next one in. I love the fact that she looked around the room and thought, there's five salmons going on here, I'm not going to be the six. I have a great feeling that there's somebody there who has cooked a lot, because very few people would blanch an almond and then roast it and then chop it up to use that with your butterscotch sauce. I love the fact that she made a butterscotch sauce. OK, so if we've got Sammy in, we've got David in, Edwina and Beth are out, that leaves us with Gary and Russell. Gary? Somebody who cooks all the time would naturally make those fish cakes the same size. But the guy made fish cakes, he made a tomato sauce, it was tasty food. I've got a sneaking suspicion that Gary might be winging it. I think I have got the ability, uh, although I'm not kidding myself that I'm a great chef now, uh, but I know that I, I can get better. I am so not sure about him, and I'm, and I'm so sure that Russell's got more to offer. I hope they see something in me that they think has got potential. It was soggy tomatoes with cheese in filo pastry with mushrooms on the side and a very tasty sauce. Great. It made tasty sauce. What about the rest of the dish? At least Gary cooked a whole dish You know the rules? Three of you are staying and three of you are going home. Beth, Edwina. Sorry, ladies, you better you're leaving us. David, congratulations, you're cooking tomorrow. Well done. Samia, you're staying with us, congratulations. So, that leaves us with Gary and Russell. Russell? Sorry, Russell, you're leaving us. Congratulations, Gary, well done. Good stuff, guys. I am happy, I am happy. The competition was tough, much tougher than I thought. I wonder what it's gonna be like further down the line. I just think I've got a lot of space still left to grow. I think there's a lot of improvement I can do. Now I've done that, I know I can do more, so I'm kind of very happy. To get through the first heat, I'm just made up, I'm delighted. I want to go a lot further than this, that, like I'm hungry to succeed in it. For the moment, they can relax, but tomorrow the pressure is on as they face two more daunting tests. It's early morning on the second day, and the contestants arrive at the Vintry, a busy gastro pub in the heart of the city of London. Gary, David and Samir will be working under head chef Raphael during a hectic lunchtime service. Let's get it on, didn't you? It's 1pm and service begins. OK, van ravioli, van cod, van poulet noir, all together. David is in charge of the fish main, Icelandic cod with leeks, caper berries and lemon broth a popular dish on the menu that's ordered straight away. Get me that ready, straight away, yeah? He has to move fast. The cut of on, on time. No McDonald's here, yeah? But in his haste, David doesn't let the oil heat up, so the skin on his fish is soggy. No, no, it's really. You take this one, it's not done. Okay. No? Skin is soggy, yeah? yeah? It's not nice. Sure, bags, very hard. Gary has been given poulet noir, blackened chicken with sweet potato puree and Swiss chard. One poulet noir, one cod, yeah? Yes, but he's struggling with his mash. It's too much. It's, it's too dry, huh? 
You didn't put any butter. I need more mess, yeah? It's really fast. Give me a plan on. No, 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 yeah? Sometimes the mash isn't very good, but I don't know because I haven't worked here before, so I have to change the mash quick, quick. And uh, you, get, you go behind a bit. You need to start speeding up, yeah, seriously. You put me in this. Okay, how long for the ravioli down? Samia is on a starter of wild mushroom and chicken ravioli with a sep cappuccino foam and char grilled asparagus. I want it nice and foamy there, yeah? More foam, more foam, more foam, more foam. However, Chef isn't happy with the consistency of the foam and decides he has to step in. It's no good. It's no good enough. Yeah, give me a plate quickly. The other one was too liquid, yeah? And don't put too much. Next time like this, please. Show back, show. Two ravioli in now. Nice foam this time, yeah? Kitchen. Despite guidance, she's still not able to get it right. And after a shaky start, Samia has to try... No. Try... No, it's not. It's too much. And try again. Now it's too much. So if you keep on going like this, you go down like a bag of I'm getting annoyed. I'm not getting the presentation 100%. It's halfway through service, and Gary still can't get to grips with his mash. Give me a new plate. You're too slow. You need to really step up. Yeah? You need to push more. Not like that. No, no, no. David, however, has finally perfected his fish. That's good. Nice and crispy the skin, you see? Then it's nice to eat. Otherwise, when you have soggy skin, you can't eat it, OK? So have his pick up, 31. It's a bit full on at first, and then you get more used to it time. And Samia has mastered the tricky foam. Yeah, that's much better than before. OK, 31, pick up. Samia, very good, yeah? They find themselves the new favourites in the kitchen. But there's disappointment for Gary, who still hasn't impressed. And yet again, his mash ends up in the bin. Service over, and the contestants have served over 65 covers. Time for John and Greg to hear from head chef Raphael Nabolon. What about Gary? What's he got to do? Needs to keep, keep the head together. It was just like, start getting confused. He cocked me up the mashed potato as well. Samia during service, how was she? She needs a little bit more self-confidence. In the beginning, with the form, she didn't get that right. But during the end of the service, she really started picking up. And David, how did he do? Uh, David did pretty well, actually. I was quite surprised. The first few cuts he did, the skin soggy, not really cooked like the way he should. But towards the end of it, he got the thing spot on. Which one of those guys would you employ? I would employ David. I think he has the biggest potential for me. Now they're straight back to MasterChef HQ to cook their best two-course meal. Yesterday, Samia's dessert was a hit, and after a shaky start, she shone in the restaurant. Can she now impress with the food she knows and loves? David's ambition helped him produce a winning dish, and he excelled in the kitchen. Can he make it three in a row and become a winner? Gary impressed with his simple fish cakes, but he struggled in the pro kitchen. He needs to pull out all the stops to stay in the game. Now is your chance to prove to us what absolutely amazing cooks you really are. One hour starts now. They have to cook a two-course meal of their own design. Only one will win a place in Friday's quarter-final. David, tell us what you're cooking for us. Lemon risotto with seared sea scallops and a plum and almond tatin with creme anglaise, or custard. I think this is all about safety. Looking at your recipes, although nice, I think these have been worked out with timings in mind here. Well, that's always going to be an issue. What would you say to someone who said your dishes are competent and not exciting? It's what I like to eat. It's simple, well done. Good on you, David. David has impressed, but he still must make two perfectly finished dishes. David's worked out his timing. He's been very, very safe in his courses. He's worked out what he has to do. You see, that's the thing with David. He's going to manage to do it, but are you excited by it? Gary's risking his dream on classic dishes he hopes will win over the judges. Gary, what are you doing for us? Uh, for me, main course, I'm doing a duck in orange sauce with um, potatoes and figs. Me dessert, it's a chocolate and toffee fondant. There are many flavours and textures going with this duck. It's only a little bit on the duck, the rest's on the dressing as well, on the, on the salad leaves. Who taught you this stuff, mate? 
I just, I just taught myself. I watch uh, cookery programs all the time, and you pick it up off them. Like I love duck, and I, I like it with Odin Shaw, so I know it's an old classic, but you know it's an old classic for a reason. Gary, his main course with that duck. He's got honey going on there, balsamic, figs, and fried potatoes. My mind can't even imagine the flavours, let, let alone my taste buds. But the guy cares. He really, really cares. He wants to do something. He wants to change his life. You've got five minutes left. Samia wants to wow with a menu from her French-Algerian background. I'm making a chicken tagine with uh, lemons and uh, olives. And I'm making a, a tarte or prune with uh, plums. You're using spices? I'm using saffron, um, coriander, a um, bit of cinnamon, not too much. This is the food you love. A tagine, North African, plum tart, very yeah. French. We're going to get great food today, Samia. I hope so. 20 minutes ago, Samia's rolling out the pastry for a tart. There is no way in the world she'd get the pastry cooked and the filling of that tart made. No way in the world at all. One minute, guys. Right, that's it. All done, guys. All done. David has made lemon risotto with seared scallops followed by plum and almond tart tartin with creme anglaise. The amount of lemon in that risotto is more than I can bear. And lemon and cheese is a combination I'm finding a little bit difficult here. Mm, possibly it requires a bit more thought. What, what can I say after that? Scallops gone completely. The texture's there. I wish I could taste it because I love scallops. From Maine to Pud, Your pastry's good, your fruit's cooked, I love the crunch of the nuts. It's your custard that's too sweet. The pastry needs to be cooked more. The plums need to be skinned. I need to be a little bit sharper. I wish you had taken a bit more time just finishing it off, because you had the time. Gary's main is roast duck with fried potatoes and fig, followed by a chocolate toffee fondant. Duck's lovely and soft. It's well seasoned. The richness of the fig with the duck, absolutely brilliant. I just think you've got to make your food a little bit more attractive. There's far too much salad. The duck breast should be the star of that plate, and it's ended up as a walk-on part. I don't think potatoes and figs work together. Don't need it at all. The duck's perfect. Well seasoned, crisp skin, the potatoes, parboiled, soft. It's just tip-top. I want you to believe in yourself a bit more, Gary, because you understand the technology of food. I just want you to understand that you're competent. Should we move on to your pudding? Yep. Soft on the outside, full of chocolate. The toffee's not quite strong enough as a flavour. It's still, it's still more chocolate. Combination good, good idea, but it's not Moorish. Why do you want to do this, Gary? In the last couple of years, I just wanted to be in cooking. And, and like today, like I've just had a smile on my face all day. It's been brilliant, loved it. Samia has made a chicken tagine with lemons and olives. And for dessert, a French plum tart with cream. It's Moorish, it's interesting, it's well balanced, it's well seasoned. I think it's delicious and it should be delicious because it's your food. And it's the food that you grew up with. And I think it just shows in what you cook. I think the flavours are absolutely right. I think it looks scruffy. I don't like the flabby skin on the chicken. I'd brown it first. Right. Shall we move from your main course mm. to Shea Disaster? Do we have to? What happened? Disaster. OK. Oh, my goodness. Sammy, what the heck is this? This is just shocking. The plums aren't cooked. The crust is wrong, the cream is half curdled. Mm. The pastry is really good, the plums are not cooked. Mm. It doesn't work at all. Mm. Sammy, I don't know what to say. I'm so upset for you because I, I, I think you look upset. You know what comes next. You have a long wait and we have a long chat. 
We'll get you back in as soon as we can, I promise. We've now got to find a quarter finalist out of these three. And we have a kitchen strewn full of mistakes. David's food is the food I least want to eat out of everybody's. His risotto wasn't cooked enough. And it had lemon rind, it had lemon juice, it had lemon thyme, and it had lemon oil. It was just awful. I won't be cooking that combination of things again. Together, well, certainly not for Greg and John. I think just the people I've cooked it for in the past are obviously too polite to say it doesn't really work. For me right now, I would like to say, David, I'm really sorry. Your understanding of what people want to eat isn't actually right. And I don't believe the food is as good as it could be. David goes. Gary is a nice cook. The duck was cooked really nicely. And why anybody would then want to put a salad five times the size of a duck breast and then a whole fig, no, that's going to take some pudding right. There, there was too much salad. Um, there shouldn't have been potatoes with figs. But, like, I didn't know that because, you know, I've never, you know, I've never cooked for proper chefs before. I've got to believe in Gary for the simple reason that actually his duck was cooked really well. Skin was beautifully done, well seasoned, absolutely right. I even said it was tip top. He's a young guy, he wants to change his life. We have to see the potential in him, absolutely. I moved to Samia. Mistakes are plenty, same as everybody else. The flavourings in her tagine were absolutely right. Her tart is the biggest disaster out of any plates here. Very disappointed. I could have done pancakes probably, you know, and just served them pancakes and and honey would have been better than to put that on a plate, because I wouldn't eat it. One of the rules of this part is that they cook two courses, and Samia only cooked one course, because her tart, her dessert, wasn't ready. I'm looking for the promise only Samia, I think, has the ability and talent to be able to turn herself into a proper quarter-finalist. But I can't see a quarter-finalist in Gary. We have to see the potential in him. We can't disregard the fact that actually he has come from nowhere and just gone, wow, this is what I want to do. You've all cooked well today, lots of mistakes, but the fact is two of you are going home. We can see the potential. We've made a decision. Our quarter finalist, our winner, Gary. Well done, mate. Good on you. Well done, Gary. I am disappointed. At the end of the day, the best bloke won. I'm disappointed that I didn't actually cook my dessert to the way it should have been done, but I don't think I could have done anything else differently. I've tried my best today. Words can't describe what I'm feeling now. Uh, I'm just elated. I think I can win, yeah, why not? I got to the quarter final, so I know I can improve and I will improve. I just can't wait to tell my wife now. I got through. Yeah, I got through into the quarter final. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Why did you put all those things in a pot, including the chicken? It's really elegant. I think it looks quite attractive, actually. It hasn't quite worked. 